Any health-related information on the following show provides general information only. Content presented on any show by any host or guest should not be substituted for a doctor's advice. Always consult your physician before beginning any new diet, exercise, or treatment program. Welcome to Accelerated Health TV and Radio Show. I'm your host, Sarah Banta. I'm a health coach, natural supplement expert, and a busy mom of three. Make sure you hit the subscribe button below so you're notified every week with my new podcast on Mondays and Tuesdays. And if you haven't already, join my free group coaching on Telegram with the link below. I teach you on a daily basis with tips and tools to enhance your health, and you will be a part of a like-minded group to support you on your journey in addition to truly taking control of your health. My goal is to reach everyone on earth with eyes to see and ears to hear the message of healing. So please help me with that goal and share this podcast with a few of your friends who may need my help. And today, especially, we are talking about reversing insulin resistance naturally. And this is affecting most of you. My guess is nine out of 10 of you are either pre-diabetic or diabetic and have insulin resistance and may not even know it. According to the Diabetes Institute, however, one third of the U.S. population has insulin resistance or type 2 diabetes, and the number is growing exponentially. It is truly the pandemic. I believe the number is so much higher due to unreported cases, and it's the leading cause of all other metabolic chronic diseases. So let's take a step back because I know you've heard about insulin resistance. What is insulin? Well, insulin is the hormone produced by the pancreas, and it plays a crucial role in regulating blood sugar levels. And if I didn't know any better about health, I would have insulin resistance to diabetes. I was going down that pathway. I had PCOS. I had a hard time getting pregnant because of it. And that is the number one cause of infertility in women. But guess what the cause is? insulin resistance. So that's why this is so important. It affects everybody. You don't have to be obese. You don't have to have the other telltale signs. It could be something that is wreaking havoc on your body and you don't even know it. So when you eat carbohydrates in your food are broken down into glucose, which enters the bloodstream. In response, the pancreas releases insulin to help transport the glucose from the bloodstream into the cells where it can be used for energy. So what happens then is then insulin resistance uh, comes about where it's a metabolic condition where the cells in your body become resistant to listening to insulin. It's like the mom that's screaming at her kids day and after day and the kids stop listening. And then dad comes in and whispers, hey, you better put that down and the kids listen, right? Because they're listening to a different type of voice, a different signaling. So individuals with insulin resistance, the cells become resistant to the effects of insulin. And as a result, the pancreas compensates by producing more insulin to overcome this resistance. Initially, this elevated insulin production can keep the blood sugar levels within a normal range. So what happens is you go to the doctor and you say, oh, well, my blood sugar is staying under 100, okay? So that's what the doctors want it. They all want it under 100, between 80 and 100. And it's slowly creeping up from 80 to 85 to 90 to 95. But then all of a sudden, the dam breaks and then it flips and goes all the way to 150. Well, what just happened? So as the blood sugar was slowly creeping up, you're not getting tested for what your insulin's doing. They're not doing insulin testing. And while the blood sugar is just creeping up a little bit, the insulin is doubling and tripling to keep that number down. But you don't know it because your doctor is not testing it. And then all of the sudden, as it creeps up, the blood sugar keeps creeping up and the insulin keeps getting higher, the body says, I give up and the insulin dam breaks and the blood sugar spikes. 
So I hope that makes sense because it is really a hard concept to understand. But this elevated insulin production initially can keep that blood sugar level within normal range. But over time, the pancreas struggles to maintain that adequate insulin production leading to high blood sugar levels and that increased risk of developing type 2 diabetes. So insulin resistance manifest into different metabolic diseases within the body and they all all of these conditions stem from one root problem diabetes is insulin resistance at the liver that's why i really always say you gotta love your liver heart disease is insulin resistance of the heart and there that's where your heart disease comes from pcos as with me and most women out there is insulin resistance of the ovaries and how many women are having a hard time getting pregnant now alzheimer's is insulin resistance of the brain and so this is where we look at all of these different diseases they all come back to the same root cause so what is the cause of insulin resistance well, it did not exist in children before 1980. Oh my gosh, what changed? The, what changed was the prevalence um, of processed foods. Processed foods were not available before the 1980s. And they have been filled with fructose, seed oils, GMO grains, artificial sweeteners, while having all of that awesome nit and natural fiber extracted out of the food. So we're going to go through all the steps of why processed foods are so bad for you and causing insulin resistance and causing fatty liver and causing high uric acid. All of these things stem from the same thing. So fructose. So fructose is metabolized in the liver, which is different from glucose. It converts directly into liver fat instead of being utilized effectively for energy. Then what else happens? It actually lowers ATP and the ATP is the energy in the cell's mitochondria. The goal of food is to increase ATP and increase energy, right? That's why we eat food. Well, fructose is lowering that energy, lowering ATP. And all of these components lead to insulin resistance, elevated blood triglycerides, hypertension, and high uric acid levels. And I talk a lot about uric acid in my podcast with Dr. Rick Johnson. Make sure you go back and, and watch that one. Uh, processed foods have no fiber. So fiber helps slow the rise of blood sugar when it's paired with carbs and natural sugars. But in processed foods, the fiber is missing and the blood sugar spikes, spikes significantly, leading to a quicker onset of insulin resistance. And then on top of that, the processed foods have these add this added fructose and sugar, which spikes that blood sugar even more. And insulin even spikes at a higher rate than normal. So it's not like eating fruit and, um, you know, natural sugars or potatoes like we did before 1980s. And the fiber was slowing down that rise. Now we've got the fructose with no fiber. So it's literally like putting cocaine into your veins um, and shooting yourself up. And we're going to get into the fact that sugar is a much stronger drug than cocaine and alcohol and, and uh, uh, nicotine and all the other drugs. Okay, so processed foods also have seed oils. And these seed oils include canola oil, corn oil, soybean oil, rice bran oil, safflower oil, and all, all of the peanut oil, uh, grapeseed oil. All of these oils put the body in a pro-inflammatory state worsening insulin resistance and other metabolic diseases. And those seed oils stay in your body for over a year. Sugar is in and out of your body by, within 24 hours, right? So the seed oils are actually doing a lot more damage than the fructose or the sugar. Then you add in artificial sweeteners, but artificial sweeteners are good, right? Because there's no calories. No, they increase cravings for more sugar and carbs, leading to overeating of the foods that cause insulin resistance. And these sweeteners actually signal cravings for more sweets and processed foods, leading to increased caloric intake and worsening of the insulin resistance. It's like a drug. So your cravings actually increase the more you eat. Now think about that. 
when you eat food, why are you more hungry after you started eating than before eating? That doesn't make sense. Well, these artificial sweeteners are part of the trick to get your body addicted to these processed foods. Furthermore, these ingredients cause leaky gut, may back up the liver, hinder the fat and protein metabolism, and then contribute to fatty liver. And if our liver's backed up, not only are we not able to process these processed foods, but we can't even process the good, healthy foods that we do eat. And then our body's just prone to store body fat and store liver fat. These foods also are extremely hyper palatable. Um, they blunt your normal taste buds, leading to you overeating of the sugary foods. And when you do eat that apple, the apple doesn't even taste sweet. So it's co totally screwing up with your taste buds. And in nature, fat and carbs don't come together except in nuts and dairy. And what are dairy, what's dairy meant to do? It's meant to fatten up the baby cow, right? We're not baby cows. We don't need fattening up. That's not what we need. So when you, you've got to look at foods that have sugar and fat together, that's not natural. Well, processed foods combine extreme sweet with extreme fat with extreme salt. All three of these um, taste taste things that are going on our, and hitting our tongues and our taste buds like an explosion. Nothing else is going to match it after that. These processed foods also have no amino acids. And, and those amino acids and the omega-3 fatty acids from healthy protein um, trigger a hormone called CCK to shut off appetite. So this is not triggered leading to overeating. That's why you never get full when you eat processed foods. They also have emulsifiers. And these processed foods with those emulsifiers, which that, that purpose is to bring the fat and the water together to extend their shelf life. These emulsifiers destroy the mucosal lining of the gut, causing the sensory neurons to retract in the gut that measures the incoming nutrients, even the incoming nutrients form your healthy food. So say you have some processed food, but say, okay, I, I had a bad lunch, but tonight at dinner, I'm going to have my wild animal protein and my clean vegetables. And that's, uh, it's all going to be great. Well, you don't have those neurons to, um, take account of what you're eating when you're eating your healthy meal because you've completely destroyed those neurons during the meal before. So as a result, you're ending to want to eat more sugar-laden foods, increasing your insulin resistance, and your gut now fails to register the amino acids and the fatty acids from the healthy food to signal, okay, I'm not hungry anymore. And this is limiting the gut's ability to assess it, to assess any nutrients and to halt that hunger. Then you add in the glutens and the grains that are in these processed foods. These ingredients not only cause leaky gut, but they're usually laden with glyphosate and GMOs, which further destroy the gut microbiome, increase estrogen dominance, and steal the nutrients from the body. Then you add in this whole thing about dopamine and addiction. It dysregulates dopamine. The, the processed foods alter the brain's ability to regulate dopamine, which also impacts cravings for sugar. There are three separate and parallel ways where sugar triggers dopamine release and reinforces the seeking of sugar or glucose or that addiction. Now, most drugs or other dopamine releasing behavior like gambling or porn or social media or alcohol or cocaine, they only have one pathway. And this is why sugar addiction is so strong and difficult to overcome. And I tell people it's not just about willpower, you guys. You're not just weak and not able to overcome your, your sugar addiction. There's a reason. So let's look at the three pathways. Number one is the taste of sweet. So this leads to a huge release of dopamine, which causes you to crave even more sweet containing foods to get that dopamine hit again, instead of feeling satisfied after eating the sugar or non-caloric sweetener, you actually want more. Number two is called the post-ingestive dopamine. This occurs 
where the gut um, in the body is registering foods that increase glucose in the blood. And that occurs about 15 minutes after eating. And this will activate dopamine pathways, telling your brain to eat more. Even hidden sugars that don't taste sweet still trigger the dopamine pathway, increasing your cravings for sugar. And you don't even know why. Maltodextrone is one of those hidden sugars that raises your blood sugar even higher than sugar but it doesn't taste sweet. It's put into crackers and chips, non-sugary snacks to tell your gut, I want more and you don't even know it. And pathway three, um, if the gut registers that a food will increase its blood glucose, it will increase the craving for it as a survival mechanism to store more fat because that is what the body worries about is storing energy for future use if we are needing it for survival. Now, away from processed foods, we've got a whole nother threat that has increased to exponentially, and that's radiation. Radiation coming from non-ionizing and on ionizing radiation increase insulin resistance in addition to attacking the nervous, endocrine, and hormonal systems producing oxidative stress, free radical damage, attacking the DNA and leading to early onset dementia. But what happens is when the body is under threat from the toxins and radiation, it has a propensity to flip that switch to survival, survival mode. It lowers the metabolic rate, increases insulin resistance in order to store more fat for emergency energy, stores the toxins and radiation in new and bigger fat cells for protection, and then it lowers ATP and energy. This radiation is coming from the smartphones, the 5G, smart meters, x-rays, EMFs, and more. We are all prone to it. Um, and we just really have to detox our bodies from the inside, protect our bodies from the outside. You can put these um, little things on your phone. Sorry, I was going to show you. It's not showing, but there's little devices that you can put on your phones. I've got some on my website if you want, but you also need to detox your body from the inside and stay away from much, as much radiation as you can. Then you have an increase in toxicity. The toxic burden in our bodies that we are dealing with is immeasurable compared to what our ancestors were facing. And the GMOs and the glyphosate in our food supply, the lead, mercury, other heavy metals in our dental fillings, vaccinations, water, the fluoride, chloride, or chloride, chlorine, and bromide in our food and water are all toxins that our ancestors didn't contend with. You add all of these things up and our livers and our bodies are just overwhelmed. They back up the liver, contribute to hormonal disruption, causing the body to create new fat cells to encapsulate the toxins. That's the purpose of the fat cells is to hold into the toxins to save uh, your body and keep them from the blood supply. And that worsens insulin resistance and obesity. And then your, your liver can't work. And this is why we're having such estrogen dominance in men and women um, because of these increased xenoestrogens in our body and our environment. Then you add in the spike protein. And the spike protein is the component of the CoV-2 virus that caused COVID-19. But in addition to its bill, it's um, what it did with the human cells and helping the virus replicate, it's causing worsened health conditions. And why is that the ACE2 receptor is specifically affected by it and is responsible for insulin regulation in addition to hormonal balance, oxidative stress, water retention, and inflammation. So if you're seeing any shift in your weight gain, in water retention, in the ability to breathe, um, inflammation throughout your body, and you haven't changed anything, could be because of the spike protein. And this is causing an increase in cholesterol, gut issues, mental illness, and all of these factors can indirectly increase insulin resistance. Then what's happening is there's a copper depletion. Due to the increased fructose and the processed foods in the diet, 
and the infiltration of the spike protein, both of those things, there's been this accelerated depletion of copper in most people. The metabolism of fructose causes massive copper depletion and the spike protein alone depletes copper. So copper is needed to decrease uric acid which is an integral part of preventing insulin resistance. So it does this by blocking the polyol pathway. This pathway allows the conversion from glucose into sorbitol and fructose. So without copper, uric acid increases and leads to insulin resistance and obesity. Copper also helps keep triglycerides and liver fat in check. And fatty liver contributes to insulin resistance. And 45% of adults have fatty liver disease. 25% of children have fatty liver. No child should have fatty liver. And 25% does. Copper also helps regulate iron in the blood, which is the root cause of oxidative stress. And with less oxidative stress, there's less um, uric acid and less insulin resistance. Okay, so now we need to look at insulin resistance and leptin resistance and that relationship. Leptin is a hormone pro produced by the fat cells, and it plays a crucial role in regulating your appetite and energy balance. It helps to signal the brain when the body has enough stored fat or energy in the form of fat and helps regulate food intake and energy and expenditure. So when leptin levels are high, it signals to the brain that the body has had enough food, reduces hunger and increases metabolism. Now that that all sounds great and works great. Well, leptin resistant occurs when the body cells become less responsive or becomes resistant to the effects of leptin, similar to the insulin resistance. So the leptin screaming and the kids aren't listening, this resistance can lead to disrupted signaling between the body and the brain, causing a person to overeat and leading to the weight gain and obesity. Leptin resistance is often associated with excess body fat, especially the abdominal fat. Insulin resistance and leptin resistance can be interconnected in several ways, and that insulin resistance can contribute to the development of leptin resistance by impairing the signal pathways involved in left leptin uh, sensitivity. When insulin resistance is present, it can disrupt the normal function of leptin, leading to reduced effectiveness of the appetite regulating signal. So now everything's out of whack. And when leptin signaling is impaired, it's going to increase your appetite, overeating, and contribute to weight gain, obesity, and more insulin resistance. It's this vicious cycle. So you also will get more excess body fat around the abdominal area, and that is also associated with higher insulin resistance. Insulin resistance in fructose, particularly in the form of added sugars, has been linked to the development of insulin resistance. And fructose is that type of sugar naturally found in fruits and vegetables and honey, but those are not the foods we're, we're talking about. Fructose use as sweeteners in the processed foods and the beverages, such as the sodas, the candies, crackers, and the desserts leading to ins insulin resistance and metabolic disease. But it's not even just those foods. This fructose and these hidden sugars are also put into foods like dairy and meat. I mean, I just looked at a package of hot dogs that I thought were great because they were all natural beef hot dogs. There's there's not only canola oil in them, but there's high fructose corn syrup. You do not need sugar in meat, guys, but that's what they're doing. So they're putting it in these packaged dairy meats and other healthy foods. So when we consume these this fructose, it's primarily metabolized by the liver, unlike glucose. And what glucose has done, it, glucose is usually readily taken up by most cells in the body and used as a source of energy, fructose metabolism occurs in the liver, and then it just turns directly into fat. And excessive consumption of the fructose can overwhelm the liver's capacity to process it, leading to several metabolic issues and contribute to the insulin resistance. So it increases liver fat. The, um, it promotes the accumulation of the fat in the liver 
and causes that non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, which is affecting 45% of you adults. And that presence of liver fat can interfere with insulin signaling and contribute to the insulin resistance, which then leads to diabetes. It also causes elevated triglycerides. So it, the fructose consumption produces the triglycerides in the liver, and that in the, is going to um, be associated as well with the insulin resistance and in, an increase in risk of cardiovascular disease. It also impairs insulin signaling. The fructose has been shown to disrupt the signaling pathways in various tissues of insulin, and it can interfere with the normal function of the insulin receptors. Then you've got the increased uric acid levels. So fructose metabolism raises uric acid levels in the blood, and the high uric acid levels have been associated with insulin resistance and increased risk of metabolic disorders. Uric acid also causes the copper to chelate out of the body at an accelerated rate. And that low bioavailable copper causes iron accumulation in the liver that leads to non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Low copper also causes high triglycerides and cholesterol. These things are all connected, you guys. No, we don't need iron supplements. We need the copper to get the iron to go to where it needs to go in the body. So it's also important to note that fructose from the whole fruits which also contains the fiber and the other nutrients is not typically a concern for the insulin resistance. So it's mostly the added sugars in the processed foods. So what do we do about it? Well, the top three supplements to reverse insulin resistance, number one, accelerated keto. Why I love this is that it's not just going to help reverse or um, take the insulin resistance backwards in your body. I have to be careful with what I say here. Um, but it's also going to get you off of that road of needing the, the sugar for the addiction, the dopamine hit, right? So accelerated keto flips your body into state of ketosis, burning your own body for fat, fat for fuel. So it is telling your body, oh, well, I've got thousands of calories to burn on my body. I don't need to eat the sugar and the processed foods. The additional ingredients in the accelerated keto convert the saturated liver fat that we're targeting into unsaturated fat, which is easier for the body to burn. And this accelerates the reduction of liver fat and in turn reduces insulin re resistance and uric acid. It suppresses the cravings for sugar, fructose, and processed foods. And these are the foods that increase insulin resistance, fatty liver, uric acid, and fat gain. It reduces oxidative stress and inflammation throughout the body, which helps improve insulin resistance or insulin improve insulin sensitivity. So that that clean burning fuel of ketones is like the Tesla versus the gas guzzling suburban with all of that exhaust. When you're burning sugar for energy, you've got a ton of oxidative stress or exhaust that your body's got to deal with, and that causes inflammation. When you're burning ketones produced by your liver, then your body's actually reducing that inflammation and the energy is so clean, it's going straight into your brain and your muscle tissues to burn really easily and cleanly, and there's no oxidative stress. It teaches your body to burn its own fat stores and help you maintain that healthy muscle. It increases ATP. Remember how we were talking about fructose and processed sugars or processed foods that actually decrease cellular energy? Accelerated keto increases ATP in the mitochondria, which is true cellular energy by 10 times the amount produced when you're consuming sugar. And this is in stark contrast to how fructose and processed foods lowers that ATP. The second supplement, accelerated scalar copper. I talked about the importance of copper. Well, copper helps decrease insulin resistance, uric acid, and obesity through multiple ways. It blocks that polyol pathway, which I talk about, talked about. And when uric acid stays at a healthy level, insulin resistance and weight gain don't happen. It's kind of crazy. Uric acid is key. And copper 
is key to controlling uric acid. Copper also helps maintain low triglycerides and liver fat, and that fatty liver and the triglycerides are what lead to insulin resistance. The body cannot metabolize fat without copper. Copper also inhibits what's called the PDE3 enzyme, which is an enzyme that blocks fat burning. And if the body can't block this enzyme, then it can't burn fat. Low levels of cellular copper also make fat cells fatter by altering how they process their main metabolic fuels, such as fat and sugar. And copper also helps increase fat burning mechanisms. Copper helps regulate iron in the blood, which is the root cause of oxidative stress. And with less oxidative stress, there's less uric acid. You have to think about iron like rust, right? I mean, iron in the environment rusts. Well, that rust is oxidative stress. So we want to get rid of that. The accelerated scalar copper is the only liquid copper supplement with 100% bioabsorbed uh, absorption. And it's, of course, made with scalar, uh, put into a scalar field and having um, frequencies, free, scalar frequencies enhance the product to increase the efficacy of the product, like all of the accelerated health products. And the accelerated keto is the same. The accelerated keto has uh, frequencies to increase metabolism, fat burning, and help burn um, that liver fat and cleanse the liver at the same time. All of them have frequencies to take the shock out of the body for your mental and physical state. So those are just some, some added benefits. And what else I love the, about the accelerated copper is that because it's liquid, you can spray it on your face and your skin um, and you can, you know, nebulize it and do it, do what you can do with the silver and the gold um, in that liquid form. That's just an aside. So the third supplement is the accelerated iodine. Uric acid buildup is partly due to the liver becoming overwhelmed, and the acceleridine iodine helps cleanse the liver and the blood, alleviating the liver backup caused by the uric acid, and it also increases metabolism and fat oxidation, lowers blood sugar, regulates hormones, and hydrates the cells. Did you know iodine hydrates the cells without water? It's amazing. All of these factors help reverse the high insulin resistance in uric acid. Um, so those are the three. And the accelerodyne iodine is the only monoatomic radiation-free iodine that has 100% absorption and is hand, enhanced with the scalar frequencies to detox the cells from the toxins and the radiation that we are talking about in all 100 trillion cells of the body, not just the thyroid. It helps... Um, alleviate the damage done by the DNA uh, to the DNA by the spike protein. And this is in stark contrast to most iodine supplements that come from toxic um, iodine sources. So what else can you do besides the accelerated keto, the accelerated copper and the accelerodyne? The other supplements you can add in is the accelerated ancient salt. This not only helps lower blood sugar in the short term, literally can take diabetics out of a diabetic crisis by putting some accelerated salt in your water or on your tongue, but it also plumps up the blood to flush out the toxins, hydrate the cells, support that apoptosis, which is the destruction of the diseased and damaged cells, breaks down the fat in the liver, improves digestion, and dilutes the uric acid. It will also help reduce sugar cravings and processed foods because a lot of times when you are craving sugar, your body actually needs salt, but it gets the wires crossed in the brain. So you think you need that sugar. It provides over 62 minerals, which helps intracellular hydration. And most salts are stripped of minerals, leading only sodium and microplastics, uh, which cause the inflammation. Now, throughout this whole talk so far. I've mentioned the liver and you gotta love your liver. It is more important than ever to be doing liver flushes four times a year or more. I do them more and now they're just easy, super easy. And I've made the program really easy, but diabetes comes from insulin resistance in the liver. The liver is responsible for fat metabolism, 
optimal thyroid function, optimal detoxification, and all of these factors contribute to insulin resistance, fatty liver, and obesity. So the supplements in the liver flush cleanse are meant to soften the liver stones, prep the liver to release those stones in the toilet, and you'll see hundreds to thousands of them in the toilet at, at the end of the flush. And then what happens? Insulin sensitivity, detoxification, fat burning, metabolic rate, they all improve. It helps reduce that uric acid, um, improve the breakdown of fats and proteins, eliminate any pain or cramps or inflammation. It helps lower the AST and the ALT liver enzymes. Your doctor will be happy about that. It replaces your damaged liver cells, um, reverses that fatty liver, and gets rid of thousands of toxins and pollutants um, and more. Now, if you're doing all of this, and you still need help reversing that insulin resistance, you know, you got Ozempic out there. Well, berberine is known as nature's um, Ozempic, right? Berberine is known to help manage insulin resistance. It's been likened to metformin, and it helps with diabetes. It supports normal glucose and fat metabolism, helps maintain low insulin and blood glucose levels. So it's, it's making that sugar spike go more like a molehill. And when the bl blood sugar spikes too quickly or too often, it leads to that insulin resistance. With berberine, it's able to maintain that lower and more even blood sugar levels and reverse the insulin resistance. Um, the HCL in the berberine HCL is amazing to help with digestion. And that helps also with nutrient absorption. I just uh, released a hot topic about GERD and acid reflux, well, you need that strong stomach acid for the breakdown of your foods and to kill off the foreign pathogens in your gut. The HCL and the berberine HCL helps do that as well. You can also add in the nuke no more, and this helps rid the body of all that non-ionizing and ionizing radiation. It was used in a post-Fukushima uh, study involving 32 people worldwide, and it was the only product to, uh, shown to reduce the, the radio contamination to zero. So this is really um, important. There's a protocol where you go through two bottles and you do it daily, 12 drops a day until you get through two bottles, and then you do it four days a week. Now, for me, because I'm on my cell phone and from in front of my computer on a daily basis and because of 5G and everything else going on, I do it daily um, and it, it helps keep that under control. Now, what else do you need to do to help reverse your insulin resistance? Increase your protein intake. You want to consume at least one gram of wild animal protein per pound of desired lean body mass and this will help improve your insulin resistance and fatty liver, but it will also help eliminate cravings for processed foods and sugars, satisfying your appetite, building lean muscle mass, eliminating bloat, healing the gut, and keeping you in that fat burning state. The protein will trigger that awesome hormone called CCK, which suppresses the appetite and supports that lean muscle gains um, and increase the fat burning hormone. And, you know, I, I have a family member who's just had a, an, a bad accident where there's inflammation and healing that needs to go on. And she's a sugar burner. She doesn't like eating um, the way I want her to eat. But I told her now it's critical. So you've got to change your diet. You've got to be on some of these supplements for healing and reducing the inflammation in the body and protein, protein, protein to let the tissues do their healing. Well, imagine that. She's like, God, my appetite's down. I'm not even that hungry. I'm like, bingo. That's what happens. When you focus on protein, your body tells you what you need. The animal proteins like lamb, bison, deer, grass-fed beef, elk, wild salmon, those will all provide the essential amino acids, the high omega-3 fatty acids, collagen, essential vitamins like D, E, and the Bs necessary for supporting the body's nutritional needs. And it will increase the glucagon to insulin ratio, which lowers insulin resistance and triggers increased fat burn. 
then you want to stay away from the chicken, the poultry, and the conventional beef because that will minimize the inflammatory proteins called amyloids. And the amyloids are found in the conventional meats, it meets and increase liver inflammation, the gut pathogens that trip up the fat burning mechanisms and increase the brain diseases like Alzheimer's and dementia. You want to limit some vegetables that we'll talk about in a second, the grains and the beans. They're full of GMOs. They're also high carbohydrates, and that's going to increase uh, insulin resistance. They're known to cause leaky gut, and they're actually anti-nutrients. They inhibit proper nutrient absorption, and they steal nutrients from your body. Certain vegetables um, and the grains and the beans have oxalates and sulfur, and lectins, and these can disrupt the detoxification and liver function. So off the top of my um, list is you've got the oxalates like spinach and almonds, chocolate, kale, and the sulfur vegetables like broccoli, cauliflower, um, cabbage, kale, kale is killer kale, but I have a full list in the accelerated food guide. You can look all of these um, foods up and what vegetables are good to eat. Then you will, your gut will heal, you will be able to absorb food, and your sugar cravings will go down. So then what you can do is exercise around meal time. Walking before or after a meal, that will help your blood sugar and insulin um, have more of a mole hill or a steady um, transition instead of spikes. It will reduce your cortisol. All of these factors will encourage that healthy insulin sensitivity eliminate processed foods you guys this is so big processed foods that hyper palatability they blunt your normal taste buds they kill your cck hormone they've been stripped of that fiber they contain those emulsifiers that kill that the neurons that um signal this the CK, cck hormone and they alter the the brain's ability to regulate the dopamine which is your pleasure hormone and your motivational hormone. You want to eliminate the fake sweeteners, you know, so not just in the processed foods, but in your iced teas. That's the saccharin, aspartame, dextrose, malitol. Um, they raise blood sugar, trigger an insulin response, and stimulate a craving for real sugars. Um, even monk fruit and stevia, they're less problematic, problematic, but they can back up the liver. And they're also telling your brain, okay, I just had something sweet. I'm expecting calories. So you might end up eating more food knowing that your brain is expecting it. You can use things like lemon, lime, and apple cider vinegar, vinegar to help control blood glucose and insulin. They don't break a fast and they don't kick your body out of ketosis. When you sit down at a meal, eat your protein first. That's going to trigger to your brain that your um, appetite is going to be more controlled. So I bet if you sit down and you eat your meat before your vegetables or your other side dishes, you won't finish your meal. You can add in some of the stem cell patches if you want. So here is the energy enhancer patch, but the stem cell patches help enhance the results that improve what we're talking about, inflammation, physical energy, and insulin resistance. Did you know that they did a study on kids that were um, had insulin resistance and they were very sedentary? Well, they did not tell these kids to exercise. They told them nothing. They took some of the sugar out of their diets. Their insulin resistance started reversing. Guess what happened to these kids? They got off the couch and they started playing and going out to play with their friends not because anyone told them to. When your insulin resistance starts to reverse, you are going to be more active. So why I'm telling you this is the stem cell activation patches can actually increase the energy even more, increase fat burning, and help you get to your goal quicker. So the X49 patch helps reduce body fat and liver fat while increasing the muscle mass and help uh, with the insulin resistance to go backwards. And it increases that energy and recovery after exercise, improving cardiovascular function and focus. And then of course, I love the fact that it helps with hair growth um, and bone density. The energy enhancer patch increases caloric burn by 300 calories a day, helps with fat loss, me metabolic rate, sorry about that, 
um, all aspects that will improve that insulin sensitivity. And there, it's also known to increase ATP production. Um, when you combine it with the accelerated keto, you're going to have a huge impact on your liver fat, your body fat, the extra calories and increased ATP. It's amazing. Um, the X39 patch helps with everything because literally it's turning back the clock and resetting over 4,000 genes in the body, helps prevent muscle wasting. And essentially your liver is going to be acting as if you're 20 years old. And we all know that we can get away with a lot more when we're younger than we can now. So the X39 patch is important. The other thing you can do is measure with the lumen. The lumen is a device that you breathe into and it tells you if you are in fat burning or sugar burning state. So when you wake up in the morning, you do your test and I do it every morning and it tells me if I'm burning sugar or fat. It is a combination of a patented algorithm and a CO2 sensor and some other things that are pretty cool that tell you if you're burning fat or carbs for fuel and tell you how you're doing with your, your insulin and your blood sugar. It's pretty darn cool. And something you can use daily to give you some that biofeedback. Um, I also love the biocharger and the Genius Insight app, those technologies you can use. You can find all of these on my website, sarahbantahealth.com where they are just biofeedback to tell your body how you're doing with sugar and fat um, digestion or use of energy. Are you in ketosis? Or are you not? So hopefully this helps. This is a big topic and it's affecting most of you. So please share this episode. And thank you for joining me today. If I can help you with your issues, contact me directly through the website, sarahbantahealth.com. Happy to put together a protocol for you and join the free group coaching on Telegram with the link below. There's no downside. I teach you on a daily basis with tips and tools to enhance your health. And you will be a part of an amazing group to support you on your journey. You can follow me on Facebook and Instagram under Accelerated Health Products across over 100 channels under Accelerated Health TV and Radio Show. And my goal, like I mentioned, is to reach everybody on earth with eyes to see and ears to hear my message of healing. Please help me. I cannot do this my, myself with that goal and share this podcast with a few of your friends who may need my help. You can join us here every week on Mondays at 2 p.m. Pacific, Tuesdays at 1 p.m. Pacific, and you can find the supplements and all of my informational podcasts at sarabantahealth.com. Use coupon WELCOME10 for 10% off site-wide. Thanks again for joining us here and have a great week.